Welcome back to episode 18 of Scrub Did. For this week's episode, we thought we'll do something a bit different. So we're going to talk about what medical school doesn't teach you for when you're finally working. Um, I know a lot of people are frustrated. There's a lot of things that you want to get off your chest. But um, what is the first thing that you've noticed as soon as you started working that medical school didn't prep you? Bro, have you ever used a fax machine? <laughs> yeah, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> have you ever used nah, the fax machine? Bro, the only time I used it was in, in the hospital. After a year, I still don't have to use it. I have to get the ward club to do it for me. It was so baffling, man. You think like you're taught everything, how to use a stethoscope and all of these other gadgets and everything. So yes, so the other day I was um, sent to send off a referral and it strictly said via fax only, yeah. not by email. I'm there taking pictures of it, yeah. trying to put it into an email and say, I don't know how to use yeah. this and everything. Just got to the machine. I was like, I don't know what number to put in, how to put Bro, in you know, a number. You dial how a phone to, number, by the way. Exactly, you dial a phone number. It's weird. I have to get the like, wood clock to do it. And like, how do you get it to send it over, call yeah, or whatever? I I literally, I gave up, man, and I had to just go to it and say, yo, I called a colleague, I'm like, yo, please. Just do it. Just, just, just do it for me, man. Just, what, just an interesting fact is, yeah, like the NHS is still one of the, the biggest buyers of fax machines. I think it's completely phased out in most industries. I don't know why we still use fax it's machines. It's crazy that we're using but it's an fax machines. It's like some of the computers, computers, kind of <laughs> some of the computers we use at work is so old and so laggy like you have to remember yeah, we're so used to using Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, whatever these apps are really quick and, and they're intuitive. Quick. And then you go to computers and man, I don't even understand half the tech stuff, do you know what I mean? And they're so old and they don't work and it's proper frustrating. So the first thing in med school they don't teach you is basically you're gonna have to deal with fax machines, you're gonna have to deal with computers that don't work or IT tech that is so far dated, but now luckily with the new med tech revolution and the whole paperless system that's coming into phase, it's still it behind. Becoming, it's but still it's behind. definitely behind. I'm sure it's everyone still, will say, like, even if you're a consultant or a junior, we are way behind in terms of the tech stuff. Do you yeah. know what it is with medicine, right? All the med tech, is, med tech stuff is amazing. They got AI. They can detect cancer. They can detect Alzheimer's. Yeah. But the basic stuff in terms of having a very good, robust, <laughs> functional computer is not there. I like that's what they need to fix. Well, Windows seventy two <laughs> or something. It's it's crazy, man. Like we're making so much leaps in, in technology that we don't have the basic stuff. So whoever management is, we need new computers. All right. So that's one. Of so the that's that, that's number one, guys. So I think that's a complaint. We're gonna end up complaining about <laughs> yeah. what we did in medical faxing. school. Faxing. So go and learn how to fax. Yeah. Your turn. Um, so. So we talk about fax machines and old computers. Um, another thing I would say is, personally I've seen it is, medicine teaches you very well how to communicate, or medical school, sorry. Medical mm -hmm. school teaches you how to communicate very well. They teach how to communicate very well with doctors. So doctor, doctor. So they teach you the S bar, so how to mm -hmm. hand over a patient, mm -hmm. how to talk to, I mean, how to hand over to a doctor or how mm -hmm. to talk to a patient who is a lay person. So explaining really complicated things in a really simple terms. But I don't think we get taught enough how to deal with the people in between. So I'm talking about the ward clerks, the admin people, the pharmacists, the nurses. They don't teach you at what moments do you have to be soft and gentle, what moments do you have to be assertive and authoritarian. Mm. They don't teach you that communication bit. And I've seen loads of miscommunication happen, loads mm -hmm. of things happening by mistake. People scans being mistakenly cancelled or you know, hierarchy forms. Because the teacher mm. has to speak to a patient while breaking bad news, we're really good at it, especially at King. Or, you know, how to hand over to, to another colleague, you know, I've got this patient, I'm about to finish, chase this, sort this mm. out. But the people in between, I don't think we get taught really that well how to do with it. Um, cause obviously do you, do you mean school. upwards or downwards, or do you mean with people, other uh, disciplines? Other, other healthcare professionals. Other healthcare. Um, so not mm. necessarily doctors, because mm. you get taught how to do a handover effectively. You get taught how to do Mm. communication with a patient effectively right but you never get taught okay this is how you speak to a nurse or if someone's not listening to you or they're questioning your judgment mm. how do you make them understand this is what you want and mm. it needs to be done mm -hmm. or if someone's arguing with you how do you do with that because there's been times where nurses well, are changing yeah That's they're changing management one. plans mm. and you're like listen like I'm telling you what to do it needs to be done and these are the reasons but they're questioning you or and I've seen people struggle. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So that's like you're hundred percent right in that. So I've I've seen loads of people just just struggle and struggle to communicate and just build a team. I think one of the most important things, right? So the the jobs, mm. not 
all of the jobs but some of the jobs and especially some of the, the, the some of the weeks that I've had where I've worked with a real team a real mm. unit of nurses HCAs doctors consultants and everyone else is where we all knew where we were an actual team communicating with each that other so in a well, nice man. way in a nice way so what the best tip that I ever got given to me before graduating was make sure you make friends with everyone just be a pleasant person just if you're a miserable person who's rude to everyone under the sun mm-hmm. think you're uh, you're you're the absolute godsend godsend the gift, gift yeah. <laughs> to all right you're going to have some serious problems and you don't know everything that's the truth you won't know everything and you're going to be wrong in a lot of things yeah. so i always i remember when i went on to the wards my attitude was these nurses have been here a lot, a lot than longer than I have and they're going to know stuff that I'm going to want mm. right they're going to know so certain things uh, for example setting up oxygen and which masks to use because yes, they're the ones that they know, it's not they know consultant in your red it's consultant already, consultant already, yeah. you, yeah. they're not teaching me that. they know how to do that and I found that if you build a rapport with everyone with absolutely everyone what you find is that work is so much nicer right mm. and things get done appropriately for example your example of i've come across that as well mm-hmm. where a nurse doesn't necessarily understand my management plan or the management plan the consultant has given and gone mm-hmm. so they're not there anymore and they're sort of refuting and battling me against it, it yeah. or doing something else that's a bit rogue mm-hmm. and you're there trying to say no don't do that and i think what i did my technique was I've just build a good report with them understand mm. why they come and just explain explain mm. the rationale explain the reason instead of just demanding look listen this is what's happened yeah. you're going to happen is like you're I'm the doctor I've, I've heard people even say like I'm the doctor I went to med school this is why it needs to be done <laughs> do it but at the same time the flip side mm. of the coin is sometimes nurses spend time with the patients a lot of time patients say mm. things to nurses that they don't necessarily say to a doctor mm. and at the end of the day and this is what medicine encourages anyone it doesn't matter if you're a doctor mm-hmm. if you're a nurse if you're a hca if you're a pharmacist you should always pick up something that's concerning or potentially an issue exactly anyone can fall victim to making a mistake we're mistake. all fallible yep, yep, you know yep. what i mean um, so that's the main thing uh, so i would say um there is a flip side but that's one thing they don't mm-hmm. teach you in med school exactly they, they don't absolutely but it's absolutely something don't. you learn on the job so what we're trying to say is um and they do say it, is a lot of things you will only learn by doing it. You will only mm-hmm. do it by working. And there are a lot of things that you're limited. You can't, like saying certifying death, you can go watch it, do it. But until you're doing it yourself, yeah. you're not going to be able to do it. Um, there are certain things, um, if we could add to the curriculum or change or tweak it, these will probably mm-hmm. be things. But then maybe at the same time, it's something that you learn on the job. On the job, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Isn't it? True, true, true. Um, something else that med- medical school doesn't teach you. Um, I think it's it's some of the medical schools are picking up on it, and I think that's sort of your management and your leadership skills, mm-hmm. right? You never get the opportunity to truly develop those skills, hone those skills, maybe at a society level, mm. but never at a level where you truly are performing mm. at um, in a role where mm. it's it's author- authoritarian and sort of what you do mm. has repercussions what do you think about that yeah i think um med schools are very good at making a very good doctor mm. um, and in terms of leadership and management and other wider skills medicine does teach you you do learn how to problem solve you do think how to mm. be logistic and but in terms of and, st- and strategy as well so we're very good at let's say doing research or an audit mm. or doing something but in terms of bringing change to a department as a clinician is very difficult like you don't know how to approach it how do you go about it how do you mm. create a, a proposal how do you create a plan how do you mm. create a budget um, that type of stuff is very important and the difficulty is as a clinician or a consultant you have to learn to do that so mm. as a consultant in my department he's always trying to save money how to create budgets how to so if we want a new depart if we want a new award or if we want a new piece of tech or new kit he has to do a budget proposal but this is not definitely talking about <laughs> you, we don't learn you know about I mean? that at all so if we want extra best space mm. so if we want a guy new wood particularly for guy new, so he needs to create a whole proposal he needs to show the budget and say this is how much the hospital saves and timing and if you're good at it you will land it you'll get the funding to it if you're not good at it and if you've never done it you're not gonna you're gonna struggle right exactly but we're here in med school have you been taught this is budget planning this is how a department runs because mm. if you become a consultant you will be running the department at the end of the day remember? exactly like you, yep. if you become a consultant surgeon you are responsible for even the surgical means i remember they were, they were 
identifying which mesh cost the most money, biological, synthetic, how do they run the department, rotors. They're managing rotors. Exactly. And these are skills that you're not too medical. So I think it'd be good if they could have a day or sessions on management, leadership and strategy in a way that benefits medicine. Because I feel if you teach medical students this, because at the end of the day, we are the people that work in the system and we mm -hmm. can make the changes. So if you teach us these skills early on, we can deploy the skills and do it rather than get to a consultant level, not have done anything for 10, 15 years and all of a sudden be given a whole pack of papers saying this is budget, regulate. Regulate, just do it. Yeah, just so manage the money and thing, enhance right? it. And society is extracurricular. Medical school doesn't tell you to become a society member. Mm -hmm. They don't tell you to run a society. It's a university thing. Mm. Um, and in terms of projects, it's audits and quality care improvement. It's not like a budget proposal or is this endoscopy better than this one? Do we get the fund? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So that, I think and how to manage limited resources. Oh, yeah. Right. We work in a, I think, walking into F1 and mm. F2, you, you walk in sometimes with this belief that you've got one million beds in the hospital. Yeah. You've got one million NIV machines, one million uh, kits of everything. Everything. And every scan unlimited. you want it will happen yeah. with the click of a finger. I can get... Oh, I'm suspecting this condition. Hold on, I will send you to the MRI machine. Yeah. MRI. Which is the How long does it take? Yeah, you're just gonna think I can get an MRI like that. So we have any situations like that. Exactly. So well, I work obviously um, as one of the hospitals we work with is a major trauma centre. Mm. So we have access to MRIs where mm. we can get mm. overnight, for example, MRIs done. But again, not at the snap of a finger. Mm. There's loads of traumas well, coming in yeah. and things like that. But what about the little stuff? So MRI, I get like. Mm let's say i remember like you know the little vacuum containers where you take blood from yeah. that was missing so we had to use the big one for blood cultures and it's the little things exactly or like so you're to medical school this is how you take a history this is how you examine a patient this is how you book investigations so they're like the gold standard is ultrasound everyone should get an ultrasound but you go early in the morning and there's only four ultrasound slots two have been taken by the <laughs> gen surge for the exactly. cholecystitis patients i need two because i don't know what's happening to my ladies if they're pregnant or not but there's three of them and there's only two scans. Exactly. In medical, they said to me, I can get a scan there's for all a, of them. And you need a scan. Everyone needs a scan. So yeah. now you're fighting. So managing resources in a limited environment yeah. is something. Or, so one common uh, situation I come across, right? Our department gets seriously busy in ED mm. to the point where you can imagine every single trolley and bed is taken. Yeah. And you've got a patient and you've managed to squeeze yourself into maybe a cubicle where there's a chair. Yeah. And med school teaches you, make sure you examine a patient in a trolley yeah. or on a seat flat with the abdomen and all of that but what do you do when you don't have an option obviously we you do it but how do you um utilize your skills so that it's effective in the position of being seated i think do you know what they should do it, it throws something that reminds off. me like whoever is interested in medical education mm. this is a good tip i think if you were to go out create something or a presentation on this is the gold standard however in times of everyone's on black alert level four mm -hmm. not enough discharges not enough <laughs> winter beds. season our whatsapp group yeah. is full of that right yeah they should do this thing where basically i don't know if it's correct or not but i think it will help is in situations like this this is the next best way to effectively manage a patient or mm -hmm. never manage a patient like this or if you can't get an ultrasound use this or yeah if you can't get the blood test in enough time or they're taking a while to find the pregnancy hormone in the blood use this as an expert so exactly obviously you will learn and as medicine they teach you how to think outside of the box and you always mm. naturally all medics and doctors find a way to get things done because that is your job and you will do mm. it um it's just nice to know um and it's not even a complaint it's just one of those things heads up to all the new medics especially the fifth years that or final years rather yeah medical school does not teach you how to work in a resource limited <laughs> environment um obviously it we've, is got a every, we've got a million slots for yeah everything. it is a stretch <laughs> service and um but this isn't to say you know the nhs mm. you know is a particular way it's just it's quite fun to kind of talk about the things that you thought would happen but it doesn't really happen exactly like that. um but that's quite interesting is there anything else you want to talk about so we talk about a few I don't know if we're complaining or ranting or whatever this this is turning out to be in this episode. This is a bit of rants, but to talk about. it's a bit cool to talk about what med school didn't ever teach, teach us for and what, what are the flaws. Um, what else would you say? What else would you say? Um, so we talked about the computers, we talked about the fax machines, resources, um, strategy. Um, the last thing I want to talk about, which is quite important, I don't know if it's the right time to talk about, I don't know if I wanted to do an episode, is this 
dog eat dog mentality and this mentality of competition mm. um, people that probably know us is obviously because of the environment we came from from the background it's more I want to see you do well I want to see everyone else do well and we all need mm. to smash it together and in med school there's this mentality and it's fair enough medicine is very highly competitive it takes a lot to get into med school and everyone wants to get first center and everyone wants to do the, the well mm. um, so this mentality of doggy dog or performing the best obviously as a doctor you should perform the best but it kind of changes because and I think some the thing that gets me is for some people this doggy dog mentality stays and I have seen where I think I've seen it in surgery more than anything else mm. where they would kind of make things up so they get to spend the most time in theatres or they will mm. see like I'm not involved in a certain project or not and then they are but they don't want you to be part of that project. That yeah. gets me as an individual. It's nothing to do with being a doctor, nothing to do with medicine. Me as an individual, I don't like that type of behavior. And I've seen it with my own eyes mm. where they would be like, um, okay, I want to do this or let me do this or do you mind covering me for this and that? And then they will rush into theater to get you know, more hands-on experience or mm -hmm. increase the number of cases they do, which then lands in their job. And this dog eat dog mentality, maybe it is what you need to become a good surgeon or become a good physician, but for me, it sits uneasy, uneasy for me. For that. You know what? Um, so I would say in the first year or two, I'm actually guilty of that myself. The system, I think the system itself is a huge player in this. Mm. Think about it like this. The whole SJT exam, the mm. whole decile ranking, which contributes to you getting your job, all of it, mm. all of it pitches you against me. Yeah, that is true. Right? It pitches you against me. It encourage the system almost encourages that. The system encourages the surgeons and all of those guys whereby if they have more procedures than person, yeah. the person next door, then automatically they're higher. Right? It pitches people against people rather than people trying to support each other and become a team. But do you think it's important and, though, like having a doggy having a doggy dog mentality in medical school, fair enough you kind of not share resources or if someone asks you a question you don't explain it to them it makes you do well you get a good post you get a good dean or a good hospital but do you think it works as a doctor so once you graduate fair enough you're a doctor everyone's a mm. doctor do you think this doggy dog mentality lying to your colleagues or secretly going it's, into theaters does that make you a better surgeon maybe it does because you get more hands exposure or is it the right would, way of being a doctor you know what it's it's such a miserable situation to be in and mm. Maybe you are, I don't know, I don't know the answer to that question. Maybe you are if you've mm. managed to get into a hundred more theatres or whatever. Mm. But are, are you, do you really enjoy doing that? Mm. Like, um, so in my first few years, like I said, I was guilty of doing that where I, mm. not everything that you said, that was crazy, that's crazy level. But in the sense that I, in my head it was, I need to study mm. 100 more hours than the next person. Mm. Otherwise, they're going to be in the position that I want to be in. Mm. Do you get what I mean? Mm. And then you achieve that and you just see that all of those hours mm. that I sacrificed just to be in this position, it means nothing. It means nothing in the grand scheme of things. Some of the biggest consultants and the best consultants we've seen, for example, if you remember one of our supervisors, mm. yeah. he was the most laid back character, yeah. loved life, mm. was like, chill out, don't, don't take life too seriously. Mm. And just seeing that and you realize, man, it's happiness and all of those things. Mm. It, and success and sometimes it's not a destination it's the journey yeah. that we should take I agree with that man um, I definitely say that to all the enjoyment in yeah like um, enjoy the process embrace, embrace the fact embrace it and love it I appreciate it some mm. days are really rough some nights are really bad and you're thinking you know how did I end up here it would have been so much easier to you know get an office job mm -hmm. or work in the city uh, relatively and but then there'll be nights where it's just amazing so embrace that journey embrace it like mm. You worked hard, you're a doctor, and there are some amazing moments, some fruitful moments, and then those moments, I think we mentioned previously, are enough to kind of be enough for you to go back into work the next day. Exactly. Um, but yeah, this mentality, like I've been thinking about for a while, because obviously it's maybe it's because now is the season or now is the time when people apply for specialty training, mm -hmm. which the deadline is in the end of November, I believe. So I think it's starting to become a bit more evident, the rush and the... Uh, people fighting each other to go mm. into theatres and I've seen it personally um, and yeah, it's something I've hated it from, the, from, the, from the beginning anyway um, maybe it might be a fact because I've never been that smart but um, 
I personally, you know, each to their own. Mm-hmm. If you feel that's what you need to do to progress and do well, then that's so. You. From a previous discussion that me and you've had, right? You know, um, so this whole dog eat dog mm-hmm. mentality, right? I think we've read a lot of books, we've come across a lot of speakers, mm-hmm. a lot of people who've who've been successful, and they always come out with one thing, and that's that. You what you're going to achieve, what you want to achieve. Mm. If you go about it the right way, mm. you keep at it, you work on yourself, you develop yourself, mm. you'll achieve it independent of what your neighbor is doing. Yeah, I agree. And this whole dog eat dog mentality of you having to destroy someone else for you to do better or for you to hide and mm. do all sorts of things, it leads to nowhere. And what we also find is that there's room, even if you're a businessman or whatever, there's room in the market space mm. for you to join them. Mm-hmm. And I think. That's what it is. I think that just makes life so much more better for you. If you leave this whole dog eat dog mentality, understand that you've got a goal that you want to achieve. Mm-hmm. You'll achieve it. And it's just about planning your route and enjoying your journey to that destination, mm-hmm. isn't it? Um, but you're right. We've obviously witnessed it. We know what it feels like and everything like that. Um, but yeah, med school doesn't teach, teach you. you how to deal with that or how to... Uh, I think, do you know what? I don't think it's just medicine. It's just... Mm-hmm. it's. All is present in all walks of life is everything mm. it's just something I noticed um, it's, to be fair it probably doesn't have anything to do with the topic today but I just thought since we're there um, that transition I thought would have phased mm. out but some people still have it but fair enough I mm. guess you know you have to do what you have to do to get what you want to get and I get that um, and there's obviously more than one way in doing it um, but yeah I think that's enough in terms of what we talked about in terms of med school don't you know? Don't mistaken us, guys. Medical school is amazing. It teaches you so much more than what it doesn't teach you. Mm. We're just nitpicking, really. Um, but once again, thank you ever so much for following our journey. Um, we've got loads more exciting things coming up. Um, but thank you for mm-hmm. watching today's episode, and we hope to see you next week.